Okay, and um, you said you were a Muslim? All right, so can you give us a little bit of your background, like how you became a Muslim? I basically converted. I used to be a Sikh. Uh, I used to eat pork as well, bacon, and then I realized I came from a bad family, taught me a lot of negativity, and I just went through a lot. So I just, I just found a family who treated me nice, and I felt like to become a Muslim just to feel good and respect myself and dress for myself and look how it's reached me. And People respect me now and I'm not going to tolerate nobody or no one to talk bad about my religion. I don't care who they are or where they come from. Do not, they not, do not talk bad about my religion. Simple as that. Okay, so you became a Muslim because you was, um, basically you say you was in a dark place yes. and you wanted to feel better and you found a family that was yes. nice to you and treated you well. Okay, and was any of that about seeking God? I also, I, I also wanted to become a Muslim just to believe in God, pray, pray for, pray for God and um, do the right things and, you know, do good deeds and that's the reason why as well. And what's your relationship like with God? Great. Like, I never actually experienced myself like this before. Um, I was not religious, but now I just feel like I'm doing I got him. I got God to talk to when I'm feeling down, you know. And He helps me stand up on my feet, and you know, guy, He guides me the right way. Okay, so a I lot put of my trust, I put my trust in him and I believe him. Believe okay, him. so can I ask you a question? You know, if you was to say, for example, sin against God and everybody does it, you know, we've all broken God's law, everybody's lied and, you know, pride, anger, jealousy, you know, we just witnessed a man that was, you know, not okay. Um, and so basically, you know, when people respond like that, in your um, religion, how do you go about seeking forgiveness? Because if God is holy and man is not holy, there's a separation there. There's a barrier there. Isn't I mean, there? I mean, in my in our whole in our holy book in our Quran, it says to forgive anyone, even though they did bad sin. You still need to forgive because God will punish them even though you forgive them. They, they, they won't get away with nothing. Just forgive them and then, the, go, go, and then let God do the rest. Okay, but what, that's what I do. Okay, but what about your sin? I don't, I don't really commit any sins like that for, um, for, for people to forgive me. No, not about people forgiving you, but what about when we, you know, because what about when you sin against God? Like, how do you go about seeking That's between me and God. Okay. Nothing to do with nobody else. No. So, my the point I'm trying to make is, do you remember the story of Adam and Eve? Yes. And you kind know... Of, yes. Okay. So, well, basically, God created Adam and he made him to be perfect. And he said to Adam, you can eat of every tree in the garden, but the day you eat of the tree of good and evil is the day that you die. And obviously, we know that Adam disobeyed God. He didn't listen and he sinned against God. Well, Adam didn't die a physical death that day, but he did die a spiritual death. And every single one of us has sinned against God. That means that we are by nature, we are spiritually, we are born into this world. Spiritually, we're dead. And when Adam sinned against God, he tried to sow, he tried to cover up his shame by sowing fig leaves together, but he wasn't able to do it. And so God took an animal and he covered his shame, but he still had to leave Eden. And he told the serpent that deceived Eve in the garden that it would be the seed of the woman that would crush the serpent's head. Now we agree that Jesus came through a virgin. That's something that you agree with. That's what we, we, you know, we say. But that seed of the woman, because usually it's the seed of the man, isn't going to be 
no placid human being because he's going to dis he's going to defeat the devil that's what it tells us in genesis uh 3 15 and the quran says that the bible is the word of god and that the quran also says you're to stand on the truth of the torah and the gospels and the torah talks about the seed of the woman and we have manuscripts that go back thousands of years before muhammad and in those um, in manuscripts, um, it says the seed of the woman would crush his head. Now, we know that's not no human being. And so when that seed of the woman was to come into his creation, we know it's not going to be like you and me because we can't defeat the devil. You would agree with that, yeah? So the seed of the woman could only be God because only God can defeat the devil. And it was written thousands of years before Muhammad. So if you go back to 700 years before Muhammad came into the world, uh, sorry, not Muhammad, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, uh, came into this world, it was prophesied through a prophet called Isaiah that the Alma would conceive a child, that his name would be Emmanuel, God with us, that he would be the son of God and that he would suffer and die on the cross for our sin. Um, the reason that I asked you about sin is because every single one of us has sinned against God. Every single one of us owes God a debt. If Adam had to leave Eden with one sin, our good deeds are not going to outweigh our bad deeds on the day of our judgment. That's just not, you know, one sin and Adam had to leave Eden because his perfect union with God was broken. And so you can, Adam was sorry as well. He did say sorry, but he couldn't undo what he'd just done wrong. And likewise, we can't undo what we did. And so God's way of salvation was to come into his creation and was to suffer in our place. The death that we deserve to die, God himself came into his creation in the person of Jesus Christ, took on flesh. When you come to believe in Jesus, I'm not talking about religion. Religion is, um, all religion, whether it be Islam or Catholicism, they all teach you the same thing, that if you do good, you can be a good person. Yes. Um, There's a lot of yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, but, you know, they all teach that you can do good. If you be a good person, that will make you good with God. But Jesus says if you put your faith and trust in him for the forgiveness of sin, he'll change your heart, give you the Holy Spirit, and he'll bring you into relationship with God. And so, you know, what do you think of that? <sighs> Having forgiveness of sin and reconciliation back to God, being in relationship with him, knowing that you have the promise of eternal life, I mean, I don't really know what to say. Okay. Um, well, can I share with you my heart? Like, when you come to know Jesus and he changes your heart and he puts his spirit in you, he shows you what it's like. He shows you real love, true love. He gives you what no human being could ever give you. He gives you what no one, you can't give yourself. Even in your deepest, darkest moments, when you're going through your trials and tribulations, Jesus is always there. He said to us that he would send a comforter. And I do believe that in Islam, they think that that's Muhammad, but that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that it would be the Holy Spirit that would come in his place. And when you put your faith and trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of sin, he changes your heart, but he puts his Holy Spirit in you, who is your comforter, who is your guide, who directs you and leads you in the way you want to go. God is your father and it, you know, and only through believing in the real Jesus can you know him. So can I encourage you to read the Gospel of John? Because religion is not of God and it seems to me like you're seeking love and you want acceptance, but it's God you need that from because no one's going to fulfill you. And the only way you can have that is through Jesus Christ. A real relationship with Jesus, who is God in the flesh, who suffered and died on the cross for your sin, was buried yeah, and raised Jesus on the third day. Jesus is a human, just no, like us. If Jesus he's, not is, a, he's not God. But he's a human. And I hear, and I, and I've been taught that, like somebody told me that, that why should you believe in Jesus when Jesus is just like us, a human? But Jesus wasn't just a human. Well, and that's so, what I was told. Okay, so what, sorry, sorry, who, who told you this? Uh, some, um, somebody I used, somebody I used to um, live, with, um, live with. Okay, well. Um, the, the Quran says that Jesus is the word of God. Okay, so the Quran says that Jesus is the word of God. And, in the, and it also says that the Torah 
is uh, the word of God and that you are to stand on the truth of what is written in the Torah. And in the book of the Torah, which is Genesis 15.1, the word of God appeared to Abraham. And Abraham addressed the word of God as the Lord God. And like I said to you just before, the seed of the woman that was to come is to defeat the devil. No human being is going to come into this creation and defeat the devil. But God himself can do that, not a human being. So the seed of the woman is not going to be a human because he's going to defeat the devil. And it was written thousands of years before Muhammad came into this world. You know, can I ask you a question? And you might find this offensive, but it really isn't me trying to attack you personally. I just really want you to know the truth, okay? So I pray that you will receive with grace what I'm about to ask you. All right. Do you think that it's wrong for a 50-year-old man to sleep with a child? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, it's... Um, what's it called? Pedophilia? Prostitute, no. Pedophilia? Pedophile. Yeah. And it's just disgusting. Okay, but do you know that in the Hadith, mm. it's written that Muhammad received his revelation from God while he was in bed with a nine-year-old child? And do you know that we today would say that that was wrong? And wouldn't the creator of the universe also know that that was wrong? Mm. Why take the word of a man that would do such a thing? And not just Aisha as well. There's another little boy as well that he molested. It's written in the Hadith. I pray you go and check it out for yourself, okay? But what I'm trying to say to you is, all right, 700 years before Jesus came into his creation, it was prophesied that he would come, that he would be born for a virgin, that he would be Emmanuel, God with us, that he would suffer and die for our sin so that he could bring us back into a relationship with God because mankind is separated from God because of sin. Jesus came 2,000 years ago he died on the cross for our sin was buried and raised on the third day and the minute you believe this in your heart and you confess this with your mouth Jesus himself will save you I mean um, I don't really know a lot about I don't really know a lot about Christianity religion because I am, I'm also new to to you know believe believing another religion, so I'm I'm still I'm still also learning about my culture, and it's sometimes um, I find it difficult to understand about another another person's culture. Like I'm not really good at knowing the difference between Christianity and other cultures you know like I said I'm still new to figure out my own culture and you know I'm, I'm just trying to focus on doing that okay I'm not really good at focusing on I, not really uh, yeah good it's, at a, it's okay I don't expect you to know yeah a lot but yeah. you know I just know what I know I just know what I know that's it Okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'm not, um, I don't Can't expect... really give you an explanation. No, no, I'm not asking for an explanation. I, I just, I basically want to encourage you that religion, Islam, Catholicism, yeah. all of them, yeah. they're not the way to God. And you trying to be good... I mean, God is only one person. There's no, there's only, I, only, but, I was told that there's only one God. Well, there is one God, but he's revealed himself to us in three persons. So God is one being. Yeah. So he was in he's heaven. He's the one who made us and made, the, and made us into this country. But he came into his creation 2,000 years ago to pay for your sin. He did that for you. He took on human flesh. He didn't stop yeah. being God in heaven and he didn't stop filling yeah, the universe up by his and and he, But he came into creation so that he could suffer and die for your sin, so that he could give you eternal life and bring you back into relationship with God. Because you're separated from him because of sin. Jesus paid for that sin on the cross, was buried and raised on the third day. And the minute you believe this in your heart and you confess this with your mouth, Jesus will save you. Um, but God is not dead, though. No, he's God allowed. Is, yes, he's alive. He didn't. If he, was, if he was not here, who would give us this nice, this world? Who would give us the nice, the nice clothes, the food, the the everything? Who would give us that if he wasn't? If he wasn't here, so it's obvious he's still here. Obviously, but yeah. We just we can't see him that he can see us. Of course, I, I. You know what? I completely agree. God is not dead, but you know. God himself, while he was in heaven, was filling the universe up by his spirit. And at the same time, 
He was in the person here on earth, in the person of his son 2,000 years ago. So his flesh died on the cross 2,000 years ago, but his spirit is eternal and his spirit didn't die that day. That's why Jesus, when he was hung on the cross, turned to the thief and said, today you will be with me in paradise because his spirit didn't die, but the flesh did. And for three days, that flesh remained in a tomb. And on the third day, that flesh was raised up in perishable seed. So he was raised up with his glorified body. He was brought, he was brought back to life again with his glorified body. But his spirit didn't. God was in heaven, filling the universe up by his spirit. And at the same time, in the person of his son, reconciling the world back to himself so that he could give you and me eternal life. The minute you believe in him. Jesus is the way to the, to the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the bridge between us and God. Because of our sin, we need atonement. Somebody has to pay for sin. And Jesus paid for that sin 2,000 years ago. You can't pay. I can't pay. But Jesus paid for it. Can I ask, what, what do you know about Islam? Well, do you know who the, do you know who the creator is? The creator? The creator. The creator? Okay, I have relationship with God and he is... So what do you know about Islam? What, what do Islam? I know about Islam? Okay, yeah. um, well, it was started 600 years after Jesus by Muhammad. Um, who claimed that he was hearing voices in his head. He thought he was demon-possessed. Um, he didn't know what was happening to him. He basically was, um, you know, he claimed that Jesus wasn't God in the flesh. Um, but we have evidence that is dated pre-Muhammad that proves that Jesus is God. And so basically what I mean is we have texts that are thousands of years old that gone before Jesus, before Muhammad, that proved that Jesus was God. It was prophesied 700 years before he came into his creation that he would come and suffer and die for our sin. And when Jesus fulfilled it, he was seen by his 12 apostles, uh, 11 apostles. They witnessed the death, burial, and resurrection. They sat and ate and drank with him after he was raised from the dead. They watched him ascend into heaven, and every single one of them was crucified, or uh, Peter was crucified upside down, but they were they were beaten and they were they were given death for their for their testimony of Jesus and that Jesus was God and that he suffered and died on the cross. So what Muhammad said, what he claimed wasn't right. And he claimed, like I told you, that God was talking to him while he was in bed with a child. The creator that I know and love is a just God and he would never condone such an evil act. And so Muhammad isn't somebody that I would want to believe or listen to because he's proven that he can't be trusted. Just by that act alone, without looking into anything else that he says. But she knows. Can yeah, I ask yeah. You, madam, sorry, if you turn your back, I'll, you, can you come here, sir? Yeah, yeah. We want to obviously respect your yeah. privacy, but because um, I don't want to divert you, because you ask, I have, if you are interested, I have a lot of pages on women in Islam. I don't have to read the, the whole thing, but would you want me to read you some info? Um, uh, so, for example, do you know that women are not are cursed for not giving sex? Yeah. Yeah. But we have to do it for respect. Like God said to women, women can't have sex before marriage, which mm. is the law, which is against our religion. If no. we break that, then it's not, it's not Except, as bad for us. Yeah, I mean, obviously... To be seen in for, public is bad. So fornication you know? is yes. illegal, but at the yes. same time, do you know Muslim women can have sex slaves? According to Islam, you wouldn't see it in here. Yes. But, you know, that's, for example, why... You've seen in certain cities in this country abuse of young little girls, yes, yes. white girls, you know, these scandals. It is because in Islam, and I, I'll say most Muslim men wouldn't do this because, you know, they, but Islam teaches that you can have sex slaves, you can have sex with underage girls. So these individuals that were doing that, they were following Islam. Um, and in terms of, um, you know, we don't believe as Christians that we get cursed if we don't give sex. I'm going to summarize in here. Um, so Muhammad said women are like devils. Do you know this? Like he compared 
you as a woman, as a devil. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. But. Yeah. Um, in here, this is from the Quran. It's, teach, it's saying that if you divorce your wife, mm. obviously a wife doesn't get anything. She might get a dowry, but she loses everything. But if she divorces you and you decide that you want to get back together, do you know that this is in the Quran? It's not even that you would have to have sex with another man to then be able to get back with him. So I should have sex with another man to to divorce my husband? Well, if he divorces you, so I'll just read it verbatim. So if a husband divorces his wife for a third time, so he says, divorce, 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 I divorce you, he cannot after that remarry her until after she's a, married another to husband another and man. he has divorced her. In that case, there is no blame the victim if they were in the, either if they reunite. So some Muslims say, oh, Allah has put this to deter people. But actually, because people are even Muslim, they make mistakes. Sometimes women have to have sex with another man uh, for this reason. Um, obviously, you might have heard that you can beat women. This is in the Quran. Yeah. Um, even though it's not allowed. It's not allowed. It's, it's strict. It's a, I mean, it's strictly not really allowed because... I mean, women are precious. We we're, we're the ones that that you yeah. know. We're the ones that provide provide uh, for the family. We're the ones who carry babies. You know, we're the ones who do everything. Yeah. So we shouldn't be suffered just because a man who just because of a man. We shouldn't be suffocated. Yeah, and obviously, and the Bible says that we are the weaker vessel, and you know, a husband, you know, should take. I mean, I, us, but in Islam, you can beat your wife if she's disobedient. This, this is a well. I'm sorry to say, but I never heard of that. My fam, my family, who are, who I was raised by, yeah, they're Muslims, and I never seen my my dad. I never seen uh, the husband hitting the wife ever. I, ever. I've I've worked with Muslims, even though they yeah. fight and argue, but yeah. I never seen them. I never seen no yeah, man hitting, I, I mean, I, hitting no woman. I I honestly believe most human beings are sinners, so. but they're not extremists. Whatever religion, but the thing is, yeah. the difference is that it is prescribed. So if you go in the Middle East, in some countries, domestic violence towards women is not criminal, yeah. is accepted, and it is because of Islam. Um, so in here, you know, Aisha, he's. Uh, child bride she said mm. that she hasn't seen women suffering as much as uh, you know with bruises as Muslim women she says you know that they were um, look at her skin as green than her clothes so it was normal for women to get beaten um, a prayer is severed by a, a woman a donkey and a black dog um, so you know it's like again comparing us to dogs and donkeys um, in here, this is in the Quran, it says, you know, going back to your issue of fornication, and prohibited women are those who are already married, except these whom your right hand possesses. So obviously, we live in the UK now. Um, we're not in a Muslim nation, but according the, to the Quran, you know, it, let's say that we had a caliphate, the Muslim man could take women, and this could be children, it could be married as sex slaves. Mm. I know that because, um, well, um, I know I had fa I have family who who had who got married at a young age and had children at a young age and they want they they want me to do the same thing but I'm not gonna do that. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay. I I I will get married when I want to. I'm not gonna yeah. let anybody tell me what age I should be married and everything. Yeah. It's yeah. not up to them at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm a human just like them. I'm human just like but everyone you, else. You, uh, yeah, and you, you, I you have are, rights. Yes, absolutely. But you know, according nobody to... Nobody can force you to do nothing. They no, nobody want. can force you. But no. I'm just saying for the man, this is a religion that is very much towards the man. Like a man, your husband. Although, again, I believe most Muslim men in this country, they will marry an adult and stay with that one adult. But in theory, you, they could have you. They could have a second... Third, but in our life, and they could yeah, have but, sex slaves. Yeah, but that in, could be, you know, this is this is legit. Sorry, go on. Yeah, but in Islam, in Islam, in my religion, yeah, you, a man is allowed to a, a man is allowed to have four wives and sex and, slaves and have kids with this with yeah. four people. But as, and sex slaves—that's the yeah. thing. 
So, but just women can't have that. No, but we believe. But we believe that this is not. I mean, this is just another example why we don't believe it's yeah. from God. That obviously we believe marriage is between one man and one woman, and obviously we believe that in human rights, and we believe it would breach someone's human rights. You know, imagine if, for example, you live in France and you're a French lady, and then suddenly there is a Muslim caliphate. Would you be happy with? your 10-year-old girl, if a Muslim caliphate person says, well, she's going to be my sex slave. Oh, my goodness. No, but this is, this is why we, another reason why it can't be from God. You know, Jesus Christ called a 12-year-old a little child. And, you know, he said marriage is for life. And he said you should honor your wife. You should respect her. Um, exactly. A, a man yeah. should love his wife too, yeah. like Christ did. And, you know, what's the biggest love? is to die for somebody. If you said to me, you know what, if one of you has to die, I will die for you. Obviously, yeah. this is an extreme scenario. Um, that's the greatest love, and that's what Jesus did. But yeah. to have... Um, so I'll just carry on, because it's a lot, but I'll summarize. So you can have sex slaves. Also, um, the witness of uh, one man, you know, in a court of law in Sharia, is worth two women. So for you, if you kind of were in a dispute with a man, he would be right because your witness is worth half. Because as a woman, and I'm not saying just you, it's saying me, because we're deficient in mind. Did you know this? Um, and, um, y you know, it's, um, in, in here it's talking again about Muhammad, he had sex with all his wife in one night. Um, in, in here, you know, this is from the Quran, your wives are a tilt on to you, so approach your tilt when and how you will. And many Muslims would say, you know, that you can rape your wife. And obviously, I believe in this country oh is God, secularized. I, People maybe that. don't do this, but I, I do believe in Muslim countries, they do do this. You know, have you ever seen videos in Afghanistan of the men getting Some little Muslims, children, yes. girls? Yeah, I know that. Um, some Muslims are not are very bad and yeah but, but i never but, heard of that before. but it comes from the thing is it comes from islam this is the thing like in this country like muhammad would be jailed if he lived here today and he's supposed to be the best example of all humanity this is kind of the big problem he's supposed to be the best example 1400 years ago and today anywhere but he would be jailed and obviously people who do these things they would also be jailed and this is where it doesn't work when you have jesus for example he, jesus being god in the flesh is the best example of humanity so what he said 2000 years ago will stand true today um i'm gonna wrap this up because there's a lot of info and yeah. then you can go back but just to summarize muhammad said the majority of women of people in hell are women did you know this um because you menstruate because um you're deficient in mind and um you know i say because you menstruate because you don't offer prayer all the time so again do you think god would make you menstruate and then use that against you to send you to hell i don't really know but, that but that's really. what it says if you read it in here why is it that the majority of the dwellers of hell are women and you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husband? In spite of your lacking in wisdom and falling in religion, you're depriving the wisest men of their intelligence. Upon this, the woman asked, what is the deficiency in our wisdom and in our religion? He replied, your lack of wisdom can be well judged from the fact that the evidence of two women is equal to that of one man. You do not offer salad prayer for some days and you do not fast the whole of Ramadan sometimes. It is a deficiency in religion. So as you know, as a Muslim, you can't fast. I know. And you can't pregnant. pray on your period. Yeah, I know so that. So do you think God would use that against you to no. send you to hell? No, because that's allowed. That's what he wrote on, in but the Quran. He's, but Muhammad said that that's uh, part of yes. the reason why you got to... So you and see when the you're pregnant, you, can't, you, can't, you need to eat. But do you drink. see the contradiction that he's using that against you? Um, and obviously I have in here, women can't pray on their period, he's in here. Um, and um, finally I'll say um, that this is, is not practiced anymore, but something shocking is that Muhammad made his wife um, breastfeed adult man. Did you know this? Seriously. 
Be but this is not practice because it's so crazy. <laughs> but basically, he said to her, you can... Um, uh, to make them, for example, if you, if you, let's say I'm your husband and um, my cousin comes in and is a grown man, Mohammed will say, suckle him, breastfeed him so that you become family. That's disgusting. And this happened. I've never heard of it. They don't talk about this because it's obviously really weird and it is disgusting, but it is in the hadith and this is, um, but I, I don't think anybody does this. No. Um, and yeah, I'm going to let you uh, get back to this conversation because I s said a lot, but I'm, anyway, sorry to come. Okay, no, no, it's good. It's good. So can I just ask you, how do you feel about all of that, what she just showed you? A bit. I'm, I'm understanding a bit, but I, I still don't believe some of, some of it. I don't know, maybe I wasn't taught, like, uh, nobody taught me like, in, like that. I just know what I know. And um, some of the information, uh, and I didn't didn't know was not teached about that. No, because it's quite extreme. So it's I'm very still, bad. So I'm still learning about that myself, and it's a bit new to me. And can I ask you a question? Um, if you did know, do you think that would have influenced your decision to convert to Islam? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean. I chose to convert because I want to because I wanted to believe in God okay. and be close to Him. And okay, well, it's got me. Well, it's got me so far. Kind of, yeah, it's so. got me far in life, and I just feel like I made the right choice. Well, I'm. I feel respected I, by people. It's not. Can I just say that it's not about being validated from people. What we need more than anything else is to be accepted by God. Yeah. Okay. And because who you are. because people will hurt you and they will let you down and you know um, unfortunately that's just the way of the world. But when you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He will never ever let you down. He was sinless. I mean, even the Quran testifies to that. And the Bible says that only God is good. Only God is sinless. We as human beings, we've all sinned, but we are born with a sinful nature. And Jesus came into His creation without sin because he was born for a virgin. And so Mary didn't conceive in the same way that humans do today. And so he didn't come with the sin of Adam um, inherited. Do you know that um, if I was to say to you that Jesus said that in order for a, a man to receive salvation, he must be born again, do you know what that means? Okay. Well, you're born into this world. You're born in the flesh. You're born into sin. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin, so in, you believe that Jesus is God, that he died for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day. Jesus himself, who's very much alive and seated at the right hand of the Father, will give you a new heart. He will put the Holy Spirit in you and he'll bring you into relationship. And that love and acceptance that you're looking for, you're going to find that in Jesus. You're not going to find it in a person and you're not going to find it in the things of this world. But the minute you come to faith and real, true, saving faith in Jesus, and he's not a prophet, he's God. When you believe that in your heart, I'm not talking about you joining church or religion, trying to be good to get to heaven. None of us could ever be good enough to get earn a place in heaven. But when you put your faith and trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of sin, when you believe that he is God, that he died for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day, he will save you. He will give you eternal life. He will show you that love that you are looking for. He will give it to you. You won't find it in a person. You find it in Jesus. And he was perfect. So you don't have to worry about finding out stuff about Jesus because he was perfect. He is God in flesh. And everything that the Bible says about him is true. The, it, thousands of years before he came into this world, it was prophesied that he would come for a virgin. It's remarkable. When you read the Bible and God reveals stuff to you, it's like a never-ending book of just so much goodness and so much richness. And, and you see God in it and you see his love for you and you see what he did when he came into his creation that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the minute you accept this and believe it in your heart, God will save you and give you a new heart and bring you into a relationship with him. Can I encourage you to read the Gospel of John? 
in the Bible. I don't have one on me, but I do have a gospel track. Can I give you a gospel track? It gives you the ABC on how to receive salvation. You follow the instructions on that, on this. You do it from your heart. You mean it. Jesus will save you. All right, let me just give you a... Uh, you can if you want to. Um, here we go. So basically, this is the admit you're a sinner, believe Jesus is Lord, this is from here, and call upon his name. These are Bible verses which affirm, you know, what is said. So the minute you do this and you follow the instructions, Jesus himself will save you. He'll give you a new heart. You will be born again. That's what it means. You'll become a new creature in him. All your sin will be forgiven, past, present, future. He'll bring you into the most loving relationship that you will ever have. And the, even on your darkest days, because we still have trials, we're still part of this, we're still in the world. We're not of the world, we're in the world. Even on your darkest days, he will give you a peace and a joy and a hope that surpasses all understanding. It comes directly from God, from have Jesus. Have you ever done this to anyone else? Have I ever spoken to anyone else? Of course, I know Jesus. Like I want to this. share Jesus. Yeah, of course. I want to share Jesus with everybody. We know the love Why of didn't God. Why did you talk to that man like that? Then? Because we were trying to, but he got a little bit upset with us. I, I tell you why, because... Um, okay, hold on. Because um, he was demonized. and he, um, I, So I go behind you. So he was demonized and he was dangerous. That's what I got the feeling. He was aggressive. From. So basically, yeah, yeah he... he he came over and he was very um, ag aggressive. And to be honest with you, I don't believe that that was, I believe that that was there to distract us, to keep us away from talking to you. I believe that you were the one that Jesus wanted us to speak to and that you were more important to him tonight. And so evangelizing you was what, that man claimed to be a Christian, but his, was, his behavior was erratic. But when Jesus saves you, he gives you a new heart. He puts his spirit in you. He changes you. And he's the one that enables you to live godly. And so his behavior was very, very erratic. Um, he certainly was not a Christian because, you know, he, he, he just was not. And I believe that God wanted us to reach out and share Jesus with you so that you knew the truth. Okay? All right. All right. Um, okay. Well, praise